Welcome to Unique Perceptions. I'm your host, Debbie Fecco. As unique as our fingerprint is the way we perceive life, ourselves, and others. And some people believe that we hold all the answers within us. And I tend to agree with this, although some people choose to use tools or a tool to get their answers. I guess they don't trust themselves. Uh, one tool, the divining rod, or otherwise known as dowsing, has kind of been pushed by the wayside through advanced technology. Well, that's what the next half hour will hold for us. We're going to learn how to douse, uh, what dowsing is, and first we're going to learn how dowsing originated. I recently interviewed with the president of the Buckeye chapter of the American Society of Dowsers, Bruce Karenko, and his wife, Leslie. So let's go to that interview and see what dowsing's all about. So how did dowsing originate? Very good question again. Uh, I think it basically came out of man's innate abilities to feel uh, the earth energies and the water below his feet. And he enhanced this perhaps with a, probably at first a rod or a wand, uh, a staff. Uh, it goes far back into the Bible with uh, even Moses and his staff where he hit the staff and water came forth. Well, he didn't actually hit the rock and water sprang up. He more or less was a staff dowser and he doused where the water was. And it, it's just an enhancement tool to enhance that. Huh? So basically we are the tool, but sometimes just to have something in our hands makes us feel a little more like, uh, you know, I think I believe this more than I believe myself or something. Exactly, exactly. Uh, you're actually, one way of looking at it is, is part of our trilateral selves. You're fooling, fooling one part of you that's been brought up by society and your schooling and your, your spiritual background saying you can't do this. So you pick up these sticks and you say, I'm not doing it, the sticks are doing it. And that lets you click into a, a lower self that is in tune with, with the earth and with the water. So uh, you being a man, can you be the only one to douse or can, I mean, your wife here is Leslie. Um, welcome, Leslie, to Unique Perceptions. Oh, yeah. uh, do you also douse? Yes, I do. I like to think I'm much better at it, being an earth mother and all that, but I, I'll i defer. For health purposes or for their own purposes, it's just a matter of asking the right questions because your body does know the answers. So you would hold the rods and say, I'm not feeling very well. Um, is it a medical problem? You get a yes or a no reading. Should I see a doctor? Yes or a no reading. Um, is it a vitamin problem? Which vitamin is it? Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? Is it D? And you go through them. And then you can sometimes find your own answers by doing that way. But that would strictly be for your own use. You would never try to diagnose someone. And, and regardless of what the reading said, if you still continued to feel bad, you would have to assume you'd go to the doctor. This is not anything you would want to treat yourself. But sometimes just the highs and lows and your, your uh, bio swings and that sometimes you can compensate for that you know with using dowsing as your tuning fork tell us about what they're made out of the type of material that you can use um, you can and talk a little bit about anything, it anything anything at all uh, the old standby is a, is a fork stick this is an L rod this is nothing more than a gutter spike furl and a piece of welding rod uh, these are a piece of copper that I use a little heavier and a coat hanger that's it that's nothing special about them. It's not really the instrument that does the work, you, you doing the, the work. You can look for whatever you want to look for, just get the picture in your mind. Uh, a common one is the pendulum, and this is held usually between the fingers like this. And this is, um, a lot of the health food people will use it, because if you're asking what you should eat, in say a cafeteria and you're going over the menu dowsing rods obviously when you're with your lady friends are going to be embarrassing to say the least so they'll they will hold their pen like this and they'll watch it and they have if it spins in a circle it's yes if it goes back and forth it's a no and they'll go over the menu and find out what they need that day <laughs> go what's the easiest why why work just go with the easiest way for you set up your own yes and no answers don't really let anybody, if, if, if they're trying to drive you into a system and this has to open as yes and close as no, you don't want them. They're trying to ready make you conform and you're not trying to conform, you're trying to expand. Ah, so, so free will. Free will definitely to the max. So there is no such book to say that, okay, when the dowsing rod opens as good or... As pendulum as, as the one that you had there, that little one. It's just a swing and it's just as good. And there's people that will, will argue all day long that you can't even use it. It has to be this. You can directional dows. I'll stand here and say, where's the best nearest source 
of water in this, in this field, and it'll be in that direction. My counterpart will be in the other corner and saying the same thing, and he'll point a direction to him, and we'll just walk till we meet, and, and right there is where we're going to tell him to drill. We don't walk up and down the field anymore. It's and then you can also tell the depth of it? Or where oh, that's, yeah, that's uh, basics when you find your stream you just ask how far down is it perhaps uh, well we were working with a stream I'll just put my mind on that stream is it between 5 and 10 feet below the well between 0 and 5 5 and 10 10 and 15 15 and 20 20 and 25 okay so between 20 and 25 so we go 20 21 22 23 edge you know 24 about 24 25 26 and it goes back. So it's between 24 and 26 feet. Because streams are not microfine, they're two feet wide. I've, when I first started dowsing, uh, uh, this old man told me, you know, taught me, and of course I went crazy all day, up and down, every, every crack and every fissure in my property. Being frugal and knowing that the water in the area was a trickle flows, they're very s small streams, I looked for a place that the water crossed. You see, the water is here at 10 feet and down here at 15 feet. So if I drilled and I hit both of them, I drilled through, I hit this one, I can also hit this one. But being really cheap, I looked for one where it's three, because I had all day and I was new, you know, I was excited. And so I found one that was at 33, 65, and 128 feet. And so I hired a driller, I had to drill somewhere, and I drilled. And at 30 feet, I started watching, because he had 10 foot sections, no, 20 foot sections, I'm sorry. And I said, you'll hit water in three foot. And then he's blowing some water in the hole to get the wood, the chips out, the limestone chips out, and all of a sudden more water started coming out. And I said, ha. And so at 65 feet, I was back there. And he hit it at 65, and I hit it at about 128, right where I said, I mean, just like clockwork, boom, boom, boom. And that's, that's why I started believing in dowsing. It was one of these, all right, if I hit it, I believe. If I don't, I don't need it. You know, I, don't, I won't believe in it. And I hit it. So then that started me, of course. To, I was looking for some sort of a sport. You yeah, know, hobby. so people who have doubts on, oh, well, your hand's the one just moving it this way right. or that way. Um, yes, they are right, aren't they? Absolutely right. It's not that you're necessarily grabbing it and moving it this way. It's, yeah, it's actually being in tune. Let's talk subconscious. Let's say it's your subconscious that's doing it. Uh, I don't know if it's your higher self or your lower self. That is what actually knows the water's there. It goes back to I don't know how it, a lot of theories on it. Uh, we already know everything that's below our feet water-wise and around us. Um, if God is omnip if, if God's everywhere, if he isn't, he's not God, because, he, you know, he's only there. But I was taught that he's everywhere. If he's in me, he's in you, he's in the ground. So if he's in, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals B. He, I already know it's there because God's working through me, and he knows. So I'm just kind of tapping into what he, a computer tapping into a master computer. That's all we're doing. And we're just expanding our consciousness. Our auras aren't this far away from our body. Our auras are out. Who knows? I mean, they know maybe 20 feet. Why not a thousand miles? What's difference is it? What's 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 distance anyways? I, I, if I know, how can I do in Australia if it wasn't that way? And I can do dowsing in Australia, so I must already know it's there. So can you teach anybody to douse? No problem. I've, so are we going to do it? Unless unless they have a real set mind that it's not going to work, or it's unless they block it, then they really block it. You can't teach them because you'll, you'll see it. You'll see them get, get the reaction, you'll see them jump back. They'll, and a person can t teach themselves to douse? Yes, they can. It's better to have someone teach you, but you can teach yourself. There are a lot of books on it. I, don't, I won't quote any, but just look in the library, there's books on dowsing. And uh, I think more of just being open to it. Don't have to teach yourself, just start to let yourself feel. But that's... Okay, what would the first steps in, if just sitting here before we actually get up and start this little dowsing uh, training... I suggest going to the hardware store and getting some gutter furrows, like spikes and furrows to hold your gutter in your house. That's what this is. Uh, coat hanger works fine. These are uh, brazing rods or welding rods. They were easy to get, so I bought those. And they were straight. I got tired of trying to straight coat hangers. And bend it in this shape, any length you want, whatever you feel is right for you. Uh, then learn to balance them. Learn to, I have two different rods. Let's go back to one. These are, Learn to, if you hold them up, of course, they're going to fall sideways. If you hold them too far down, it's going to take, you know, a vault, uh, Niagara Falls on your feet to move them. So you got to just get them where they're, they're not quite going backwards, but they're not quite down too much either. At first, you can hold them down a little bit, 
because they're hard to hold. And once you learn to balance them like this and swing them and walk with them, it's very important to walk with them. It's extremely important to, to try walking and balancing before you try dowsing for them, anything. Because you're, all of us are going to have that stupid feeling. We, we feel like idiots walking around with sticks in our hand and people looking at you. And they, they not looking kindly. They're you know, grabbing their children and running for the car. But, so you get over the stupid feeling. And once you get over that, you walk around maybe 150 feet, 200 feet, five minutes, not even that. Then you start concentrating on a, oh, a two-foot wide stream of water somewhere below your feet. Nice, bubbly, clear water like you'd see a mountain spring. Make it real good image in your mind. That's very important to get your mind to know what you want to find. It can find it, but you have to really put it in there. It's like a child. You have to really tell it what you want. So then you have that in your mind. You start walking with that constant in your mind, and you tell your, your lower self or your rods to cross or open either one that wants when you get over such a stream. And you start walking. And at first, you'll just get a little reaction. And that's where a teacher comes into play because the teacher will already know how to dial and he'll confirm that yes that was a reaction and yes you do you did feel that and that's the funny part because you really don't, at first it's you don't know what you're feeling and what you're not but if you start walking you'll see little blips and pretty soon maybe five minutes or so they will start to cross but see most people need that confirmation of am I doing it right and that's the thing only thing a teacher can give you you can learn to balance and you can learn everything learn the picturing which helps because then when a teacher does show you you've got it but how would you know how would you know you're right without you know going through the trouble of digging which most of us don't the one way we tell people to do that is to go out in their front yard where they know where water line is where they know a sewer line is maybe keep some water running in the house so you know water's going through there. Specifically look for that and go over it and go over and pretty soon you'll get confident that you can find it. You can run to your neighbors and you'll find your neighbors and pretty soon all the way down the street. And then switch to something you don't know and by that time your confidence level will be up. You're, you have taught your lower self exactly what you're looking for and how to react and that's, that's basically it. Then you get into map dowsing and things after you do that for a number of months. But that's best, you know, showing at a meeting and watching people do it, because that's, that's pretty far out. Okay, well, we're going to go do that. Um, Bruce and I, Bruce is going to show me how to douse, and hopefully you're going to learn, too. I feel it from the back. There you go. That's good. Can I have a lock on it? The power center. It won't go. Yes, it is. Okay. See, I feel myself losing it. Hey, you're spreading this. You I am. You're beyond the rods and you're fighting your own. I know. You don't want to. That's, that's all right. Is this the power center right here? Uh, I'm just, I these know. are I'm crossing, that's why. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good size one, see? But don't forget, we got four, you know, one, two, three, four lines coming in, and they're each six foot wide, so it's got to be not one point, but it has to be a pretty wide circle. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll walk on this edge. Well, actually, I'll just lock it under the edge and walk the edge. If I step away, the rods will go back to the edge. Oh boy, if I step too cool. far, they go that way. So I can just, like a, we call it like walking a dog, or you know, you're following a dog. That's your, so here's the, my footprints in the sand will be pretty much the center of it. No, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going right to the center, I know. So there would be what we call the center. Now you notice we're in a, uh, a volleyball court. Whoever laid this out, it's pretty, well, we laid this volleyball court out. Must have felt people who lay out parks are more a little more sensitive. They, they instinctively they don't know what's there, but they put playgrounds in the right area. They put the this would be a playground. A lot of good energy. People are getting a lot of frustrations. It's a real good place for a, a lot of earth energy to to help to help them do all that. And whoever put this here, I asked those people there. They said, "Ah, oh, somebody in the park just stuck it there." Well, someone stuck it, probably sitting at a desk saying it's going to go here. He more or less map dials and he didn't know. But he got it in the right spot. And it's, it's like that time and time again you'll see things. My friend put playground up for his kids. Didn't know a thing about dowsing. Two years later he went and um, doused it. Boom, the biggest crossing of, of good energy on his property is right where he put his kids. I thought that was kind of nice. He's well, nice he guy. doused it though. No, he did. Yeah, I two years saying, after. So he, he did he, it. Sometimes your sensitivity knows these things, and then when you get the tools in your hand, 
it's kind of neat to confirm your yeah. own sensitivity. Well, he didn't douse at the time. He, two years later, he learned to douse, and ah. then he checked where he put it. Like me with the flowers. A lot of it, I just do it. I was, you know, and it's to the point. It's to the point where I don't even bother to to have to know the colors to learn all that. It's just to the point where I can just feel it, stick it in, and that's kind of neat in its own right. Or I'm building a, a rock. It's a raised bed. I need a rock that's this big, and there's a pile behind me, and it was like like 11 o'clock at night, and I had been doing it all day, so I was really charged, and I was doing it in a dowsing mode. I sunk my myself down to alpha or beta or somewhere in there, and I just reach back and pick out a rock and over my head and stick it, and it was perfect. And I was doing this. I mean, to get a size rock out of an odd size pile without looking is, and to do it time and time and time again. Okay. It's just fun, you know? Okay, so let's show okay. our view, viewing audience now what we're going to do. I'm going to hold it the way I was taught, kind of a little okay. up from the hand, a little further apart, away right. from the wind. And we've done the walk around spot where she no longer feels like a blithering idiot <laughs> holding these two pieces of metal. <laughs> uh, so she's concentrating on a stream somewhere down below our feet. And when she's walking, hopefully the rod's across. Okay, now there, there they go, they're crossing. So my teacher has to confirm this. Am I underwater? Okay, hold on. See, my rods pick it up here. Now, which way is the stream flow? They flow that way, okay. I didn't ask. Well, you don't have to. See, I'm just trying to <laughs> off a little bit. I'm going to catch the stream from this side. So my, the stream is from where your rods were crossed to here, it's about a foot wide. Let's go find another one. Okay. okay. You lead. Right here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, you stay there, and I'll come at it from this way. And okay, this stream's a little bit wider. I feel where our points cross. Which direction does it flow? And I'm going to lock onto the stream. Lock. So now we're onto a stream. Okay. Thank you, Rods, and get them done across. Thank you, Rods. <laughs> yeah, that's just a formality. I'm on the stream. I could follow this stream. Can you watch it? Is going this way. Streams don't usually go straight line unless you're in fracture rocks. So it's going this way, and it's going to, I don't know if you like walking to a volleyball net, but I'm locked on. That, that way, it saves you going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and putting little sticks in. You just lock right onto the stream, and you just follow the stream wherever it meanders. And it saves a lot of time. Now for the depth, you know, let's see. Get on that same stream. Thank you. Okay, now how, how far down is this stream? Oh, 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, 15 to 20, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 19 and 20, right on there. Okay, what's the gallon per minute flow of the stream? From 1 to 5? Getting there, 5 to 10? Okay, some of you 5 to 10. Thank you. Say 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine, no, eight. And that's, you want to try that? No, let's find another stream. Let's find a fresh spring. That's the one. Okay, let's find a fresh spring. Practice, practice, practice. Now, how about, I'll start here and walk in this way. Okay. Right here. <laughs> Come on, teach. <laughs> need to find out if I'm confirmed. Am I on water? Why do I have a feeling you knew that was there crossed. before you? Yeah. Oh. You're, ca you're, catching, you're catching the centers. I'm catching, I go right through the stream. You're, you're and is there the... also an energy line here? As well as water? Yes, there is. So we've got a lot of forces yeah. that you can right here. sense. Yeah, right here. And you picked it up. More than likely, you picked it up. <coughs> You picked it up without the rods, and you just knew it was there before, and you just kind of wandered over and stuck it. And why walk? Why be lazy? You know, be lazy. Just go where it is. So we have tools yeah. now. Well, See, the you tools can do are it. to get you to that point of not needing the tools. You don't need the crutch. Hopefully, you'll be able to walk through life, feeling all the forces around you, and all the energies. You'd know when you were in a bad area, and you'd know to get the heck out of it. The Amish have been saying for years, we don't want the power lines through our thing because they're bad. And everybody's saying, no, they're not. Well, we find out now that they were right. They felt it all along. They're more attuned to nature. They're more still with the animals. They watch you know, the 
crops and the animals every day. So they're very, very tuned to that. And they knew that they felt that force. Uh, stay right there because we're going to come right back and talk a little bit about uh, Indian mounds and all these other neat stuff right here in Ohio. Stay right there. I love hiking in a forest. You know, Robin, forests are more than just great places to go hiking in. They are? Sure. Forests are homes to lots of different animals. We get wood from forests, and they help keep our air and water clean. Gosh. But our forests are threatened by development and people who don't treat them with respect. Yeah. To find out how you can help, write to Forests National Wildlife Federation. Washington, D.C., 20036. How'd you know that address? A Frog Scout's always prepared. Hmm. Welcome back. I hope you learned a little bit more about what dowsing is and how maybe you can um, get a feel for it and test your sensitivity. Uh, now, Bruce, there are, what, certain areas in Ohio that you can go that are more, what, high energy type points, and do you want to share about them? Certainly. Uh, Ohio's lousy with them. They're all over. Ohio's a very good place for energy points and things of that. Uh, one of the most fascinating dowsing-wise is a serpent mound I think Chillicothe, I believe, somewhere down in there. Uh, the serpent undulates five or seven times, and every one of those undulations is on a water line, and every one of the ones going back is on, is on an energy line. And his head is on a crossing of energy line. He was very definitely laid out by people who knew what was below them and around them, and it, it shows up in the effigy work. I was reading um, Wisconsin, I think it's Wisconsin, that they have effigy mounds there of um, uh, salamanders and birds and all of these have been doused and every major effigy, effigy line is uh, on a water dome or which is something we didn't cover uh, on energy lines they're all been laid out they the, the domes were there and then they put these effigies on top of them and all those are pretty sacred spots and full of high energy otherwise the Indians went, went through all that trouble of, of building on them now the mound system and uh, in, in Wisconsin, there were 10,000 mounds. And, and right here in, in, in the Cuyahoga Valley National Recreation Area, I think there was 43 mounds that they counted. And the locals know of a lot more that have been dug up and they're not telling anybody. They don't want anybody to dig them up. And some of the uh, medicine people that I know say they're not, um, they're not burial mounds. And I've, I've read that, too, that they dig into them and they're not. We doused one with uh, a friend of ours called a star mound and we doused and it, it turned out to be a, a feminine energy mound um, that was used to initiate young girls in, into womanhood when they became that age it had a real lot of uh, uh, yin energy to it and the reason it was in the shape of a star was because that's where these yin lines came in and we're all pretty much pure yin energy there usually it's 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 a balance pretty much 50 50 or give or take 60 40 doesn't matter but this is like you know 80 20 it was just a lot of feminine energy so of course the women took it over and they used it for their rights I'm sure they had mounds when they had to go to war that was more yang energy more male energy the different types of energy so they're very sacred spots of uh, they were their churches and they put the church where the energy was best for what they wanted to do with that ceremony and uh, before the dark ages hit Europe we were doing that too if you look at the uh, cathedral at Carnes there's a major energy line it goes right through the front door and it goes right out the back and everything's balanced out around it, except where it goes out the back, there's a little square window. It, it shouldn't be there. These things are beautiful Gothic buildings laid out perfect, you know. Also, there's a stupid little window. They had to put the window there if they want to trap the line. But that same line travels. It's one of the longest that I know of. It goes through temples. It ends up in Angkor Wat, the big temple system down in Angkor Wat. And it goes through all these, these temples along the way. All these people knew, and they built their temples on this line. It must be more spiritual, let's say. And that's up to a certain... Um, I, the 1500s, I'll say, I, I'm really not sure if it's 13, 12, 15, but at one point, you can see the churches just start getting plunked down, like on the corner of, uh, you know, First and Elm or something, that we lost that knowledge. We're not putting our churches where these lines do us the most good. We've, we've forgotten about it, and it kind of coincides with the Dark Ages when all that knowledge got buried and then after that time the churches just were haphazardly placed and they've since developed a lot of spirituality to them but they're not tapping into what was already there one thing i've noticed uh is that you have a lot of respect for energy and just for the tool of the dowsing rod um you say thank you um that respect obviously comes from a great deal of knowledge and um 
let's see, wisdom on the use of your tools and the use of your higher self uh, tells me a lot about you. Um, what would you uh, say, like, is it taken you many years to reach this point? And do you have any suggestions on anybody just beginning or wanting to begin? Hmm. Practice is for beginners to practice, to get into the belief that there's something out there other than what we've been taught of pure physical eight to five materialistic society. There's a whole other side to life that either our wise elders of this country have <laughs> don't know or they're not telling the common working Joe. There's something going on out there and I don't know what. I'm, I want to find out. So I'm becoming more sensitive. I'm learning about this balance between nature and man. That's coming into the limelight now. Uh, I mean, face it, they couldn't tell us about how nice nature and us could be balanced and still go out and rape, pillage, and plunder our forests and our mines and strip mine. And all. We wouldn't let it. If we knew, we wouldn't have let it happen. But they took that away from us so they can do it. So now we're screaming about the people in Brazil doing it, just what we did, what, 100 years ago? And so I think, I think some of this knowledge has been purposely hidden for, for very many reasons. I, I don't know them all, but... I do know it's harder to control a mass that's very intelligent and very well uh, diversified. And like the Russians fell apart partly because they got TVs, and then the TV programs came in over the border, and they saw comedies, and they saw political programs, and it just there was a whole new world they didn't know. And they said, "We want that world. We, you know, we don't want this Yugo. We want a, a Cadillac." And they have a choice. Look at all the different cars. They said it was amazing to them. Well, that's what we're doing with Dowsing. We're saying. Wow, there's energies out here. I can stand there and feel good. I can stand there and feel bad. Why did I build my house there where I feel bad? If I would have known, I wouldn't have built it there, would I? No, the Indians wouldn't camp. They wouldn't camp where it was bad. But we forgot. They would stick them track after track after track after track. In China, it's different. In China, before you build, you can, uh, it's called feng shui. You get a hold of a feng shui master, and he lays out your house. He tells you you can build or you can't build. Before you build, you have to know. There was just... In Hong Kong, they had to do $6 million renovation because they didn't, Western man and all this, whatever, put up a, a bank building. And the people wouldn't work in it. Feng Shui was wrong, didn't call an expert, and they had to fix it. They had to add big windows and things to it. So they believe in it, and they're not, you know, they've been around for a very long time. Their civilization hit a higher, high that ours, I don't think, will, artistically. I don't see it. And they're not, they're not ignorant people. They're not savages by any stretch of imagination if they believe it. Three quarters of the world's, you know, population believe it. Maybe it's time we started to break down our narrow-minded view of materialistic society and get more spiritual and more expanded. And I think that's what dowsing does for me. And I just think it starts with the water dowsing and, and and learning the energies around you and your house, checking for negative lines in your house, and then your your belief system. When you're ready, it comes to you, whether you want it or not. Okay, and I'm sure you're willing to help people. And the if. Um you personally can, I'm sure, uh, somebody in your groups and meetings that you may have will uh, love to give assistance to beginners. Is that correct? Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's what we're here for. It's American Society for Dowsers and Danville, Vermont is basically about just to teach people to douse. They don't have any big spiritual beliefs and they're not, they don't talk about it much. Teach them to douse and it happens. <laughs> it just, you know, it happens. It's just so, why, why make a big ado? But it happens different for everybody because everybody's reality is different. Each upbringing is different. Each religious system is different. But it starts to happen. Well, thank you, Bruce, for your knowledge. And I know I'm going to have your address and phone number to get in touch with you through the Buckeye chapter uh, on the credits in just a minute. And I'd like to thank your wife, uh, Leslie, as well. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you all for watching Unique Perceptions. I'm sure you uh, learned something this show, as you do, I'm sure, every show. So continue to watch, and feel free to contact me um, at Cable 9 if you have any suggestions or just like to tell me how you think I'm doing.